Today, we're going to talk about what is gutta percha. I have two relations who are material scientists. One is even a professor of material science. I don't honestly know exactly what they do, but I like to pretend that they get to research the history of interesting Victorian materials, but perhaps not. But I do. <laughs> Thus, I thought I'd talk a little about gutta percha. Ostensibly, this is relevant because pretty much anything antique and made of gutta percha will sell well for you. But really, it's because I think this stuff is cool. So, gutta percha is a natural thermoplastic or latex. It comes from the sap of the palaquium tree, which is native to Malaysia. And the people who live in Malaysia have been tapping it and using the sap for eons to make useful things like handles for knives and household items. Of course, uh, around about the middle of the 19th century, when Queen Victoria just couldn't get enough empire, it was also discovered by the British. Or more, they'd known about it for a few hundred years, but they finally figured out they could use it for things that would suit their needs. So, accordingly, they shipped back some ungodly amount of it to Old Blighty and started making things out of it. They made baubles and housewares and jewelry and furniture and even the centers of new bouncier golf balls. And they made stuff out of gutta percha to show at the Great Exhibition at the Crystal Palace in 1851. And soon gutta percha was everywhere. Here's a bit from a nice blog post that I read by an information scientist named Daniel Bodden. I'll link it below in full and the connection to information sciences will soon become more clear. The hard pliable latex was washed, folded into blocks, and brought by ship from Singapore to London and to the new and by the standards of the time very high-tech factory of the Gutta Percha Company at Wharf Road, Islington. A report of a visit to the factory by a journalist in the early 1850s appeared in the Illustrated Exhibitor and Magazine of Art. He noted that, we enter a modest looking doorway between a pair of folding gates on which the words gutta percha company are printed, and we become speedily aware that the branch of manufacture of which we hitherto knew next to nothing is being carried on within. In the manufacturing process, the gutta percha was boiled, shaved by a cutting machine, boiled again, then kneaded at high temperature, cooled in another machine, and rolled into sheets to be sold to manufacturers around the world. Waterproof and resistant to acids, salt water, and chemicals, it was invaluable to industry for many purposes. Its significance for information history is that not only strong and waterproof, but also it does not deteriorate when submerged for long periods in salt water. Thus it proved the perfect insulator for electrical wiring for undersea telegraph cables. The first cross-channel cable laid by the HMS Blazer in 1851 was made from 100 miles of copper telegraph wire encased in a tube of gutta percha provided by the gutta percha company. So let's look at some pictures. These are the things you might be most familiar with from the 19th century that are made of gutta percha. They are cases for photographs, mostly tintypes, ambrotypes, daguerreotypes, those sort of things. And they're little folding cases that um, you put the photo inside. Uh, they also used it to make ornate picture frames, just the standalone kind, other kinds of household items. It was also used extensively for jewelry, especially mourning jewelry, which after Prince Albert died, Victoria caused to be a huge trend in England for years to come. Of course, they also made buttons. They could be molded into fancy shapes or used for more utilitarian purposes. 
And as this uh, person on Pinterest has noted with this picture in their um, font that I would not use. <laughs> oh, I'm so snobby. Gutta Percha can be confused with hard rubber, but it has no back marks as hard rubber does. And that's pertaining specifically to buttons, which is good to know. And then one last thing. Um, there is a great website that I will link below that you can read about the history of transatlantic cables on. And you might think it's weird that I think that's so cool, but um, this whole thing with transatlantic telegraph cables and uh, gutta percha all started um, about, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago when I read this book here, Signal and Noise by John Greisimer, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite historical novels, and I have read a lot of historical novels. This is a totally great book, and I'll link that below too, because if you like the history of transatlantic telegraph cables, you cannot go wrong with this book. Anyway, eventually, gutta percha was largely replaced by synthetic polymers and our modern plastics. Um, Bakelite was the first invention to uh, start to decrease gutta percha's use. And it is still used a bit today in dentistry because it is biologically inert and apparently safe to store in your teeth. So I hope this was helpful and or interesting. And if so, please do hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to my channel. And thank you and take care.